we're going to go through a historical event that occurred with a couple rigs. I want to give you guys an example, a real life, no kidding, time, cost, payment, output over a period of time. Real, no kidding scenario that has happened. So essentially March 16th of 2016 through November 30th, 2016. Two rigs were built. They cost roughly $2,500 a piece. They were a six times 390 graphics cards. So AMD Radeon 390s, six of them. They roughly output 192 mega hash. We got these pretty optimized. I think we did a live stream with them. At that time, graphics cards were doing about 170 to 182 if you had some, some good overclockers. So 182, 182 mega hash, roughly 360 mega hash worth of power on these machines. 1600 watts of usage these things actually use quite a bit of power so i think there was actually about 1550 but we'll just for this purpose say about 1600 that's about 95 dollars these rigs were up time was about 85 to 90 percent over that period of time so a little average a little higher than average uh what, what i was saying earlier with the 80 percent roughly almost almost 100 dollars a month per rig so you know the person was paying roughly $250 a month, now is paying $450 a month for their power because of these two rigs. They roughly outputted 165 Ethereum over this time period. When they first started going out, they were putting out literally 11 Ethereum a week. So their curve was very high, but in March of 16, if you look at the curve by May, it had swooped up pretty quick. So by the time it was May and June, it was one fourth of the network output that it was that these rigs would have put out at that time. So the the deflationary, uh, so the the difficulty increased, the amount that you would get decreased. So if you were getting eleven a week, now you're down here getting seven. That's the kind of reality that happens in mining, and that you got to calculate for. But it doesn't discourage the fact of this kind of use case. So if you look at the time frame, total ETH by November, 330 Ethereum. Now at the time, that 330 Ethereum, I think Ethereum in November got all the way down to like six bucks. So not, you know, it was either six, let's just say for, for this calculation quick, it's $10, that's $3,300. Not looking like it's paying for that $5,000 investment. Because roughly you have the $5,000 investment for the hardware and over that much time at $200 a month, you're looking at about $1,600 in power costs. Now you're at $6,600 in total cost of running that. And that's not including, and we'll get down to this figure down here in a second, which is if you take and calculate any of your time that you're spending on this rig. Now this is a hobby for most people. Some people do it a little you know, uh, get a little more into it and, and spend by 20, 50, 100 rigs and you're paying for people and there's other costs to it. But if you're just doing it as a hobby, you're not necessarily usually costing how much time are you putting into it and what's your time worth and that kind of thing. But in this particular case, if we follow this 330 Ethereum, this time frame, we look at now and this rig continue to actually mine Ethereum all the way to current. I think the total now is like 365, roughly 365 Ethereum total. But if, just for this, just for this time period is the scope that we're looking at. And you look at the rolling average over the last week for Ethereum's price, about 48 bucks, 48 to $50. That 330 times the 48 is 15,800. You look at your total investment, 6,600. And let's just say the 70 hours, we roughly figured out between restarts and just effort of to making sure to keep an eye on the rigs and doing all the effort, roughly 70 hours of effort over those eight months was an individual spending time in totality. You know, so an hour here, half hour there, about 70 hours worth of effort over that much time. So you're looking at, let's say at $20 an hour, which I mean, is just a relative figure 
about fourteen hundred dollars. So let's just take some of this as just a cost. Let's say that it, you you didn't want to sell all this, but you wanted to take some of it out for yourself because you spent seventy hours on it. You pay yourself twenty dollars an hour. It's fourteen hundred dollars. That leaves you with the you know this all summed up eight grand. This leaves you with seventy eight hundred dollars and just outright potential profit if you were to sell it. Uh, it's a little less than that, obviously, because of the fee stuff that we were talking about by selling it on an exchange and trying to get your USD out of it. You'll pay a small fee when you're trying to convert it to US, USD cash. But bottom line, about $7,800 worth of value, potential value, which is roughly a, a little over 100% increase over what your original investment was. So nobody out there would have predicted a $48 Ethereum. And ironically, in this, when we were looking at this, we had forecasted this to be around more around 400 to 450 ethereum over that much time but because the exponential growth and the exposure to ethereum uh it reduced it down to about 330 so if you look at the air margin of error there about almost 100 ethereum difference which is a pretty pretty large cost difference but we were estimating at max potential 22 dollars eth price and it would have been profitable in that eight months Plus you have your hardware recoup cost, i.e. you run it for eight months, you break it up, you sell it on eBay for the going prices, get about three grand back out of it, or maybe a little less, 2,500, somewhere around there. So that puts you right at a total reinvestment after you sell the equipment. And let's say you're gonna go with the newer, a newer rig that has you know 900 watts of usage versus the 1,600 watts of usage which reduces this cost down to you know the $41 versus the $95. You see the price difference there over a period of eight months. There's a pretty pretty good gap between 900 watts versus 1600 watt computers. That's why you see a lot of folks talking about power because power costs money on these. And most people get shocked by that value when they see their first few months of power bill. So you really gotta manage that and as new technology comes out and new algorithms take advantage of the hardware differently, you usually get an increase in hash rate and maybe a decrease in power usage because it's not taxing the graphics card as hard. So, you know, it's good to keep your eye on that. We'll try to bring videos to you too when technology is uh, changing in these vlogs. But when you look at that, that difference, you can see why you're probably watching this video right now is, you know, how do you get a part of this action? How do you get into this? And what is the real risk and cost here? Because this could have changed. This could have been different. This is the risk with cryptocurrencies in general is, you know, is the price going to be ETH 20, $22 or like December? Is it going all the way down to $6 and people question in life? Like what, what's going on here? Is this, what, you know, where's the information at? on why the price is what it is is there adoption is there not adoption is people going to use this so hopefully this was informative you know share it to your friends this hopefully exposes kind of the 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 breakdown structure when it comes to ethereum or any cryptocurrency you can apply this use case to any other cryptocurrency while you're changing is the total output of the coin and your total your total value of the coin you know from a mining standpoint and for the folks that are watching this you know just wondering like hey you know there's community there's there's points to these coins they have features and functions and stuff and why are you keep talking about money when i'm talking about people that are contributing members that purchase mining rigs to process the transactions and spend money and time and power cost to facilitate those features that people come back and ask and say, hey, why are you talking about the money? Well, the mining community is what makes that occur. And yes, some coins are switching to proof of stake, which does not have the overhead of mining. Um, however, we'll have a whole other video on, on, on our opinions of that. Obviously, it'll be a little swayed more towards mining because we think that this grassroots kind of uh, activity helps distribute um, interest among other people. I think hybrid systems are probably the best way to go where you have some proof of stake and some proof of work, but we'll leave this video as it is. You'll see an another video. We'll discuss that and break that down from our perspective to help uh, 
you know, break our visualization of that down. And hopefully this was informative to you. Sorry about the, the way I uh, kind of write this up, but you can kind of see how the way we workflow through this. Um, eventually we'll make a, a proper video that breaks this down um, into graphs and charts and stuff. But um, hopefully this was informative. And again, like, share, and let us know. Thanks.